All right, YouTube Repo Man 64. Got a haircut. All right, so I found something. I actually found this last year, and I made a video on it last year. And it's kind of what started my YouTube was those seven days. Um, initially, it was when Jesus rose from the grave, they started counting those 40 days. And that's not true. That's not accurate. Uh, Jesus, when he rose from the grave, he spent the day um, with various people that saw him. But then you don't hear anything about him until he returns to Thomas in the upper room, those seven days. There's always these seven days. Well, I found another seven days, and I want to show it to you. <clears throat> and Cool Cat, I believe, is going to do a video on the great eighth day. Now, I'm going to show you an extra seven days uh, that, I again, I saw last year, but it didn't match anything. It didn't fit anywhere uh, last year, but this year it does. And so I want to bring this to your attention to see if anyone else out there um, can help figure out what it might mean. I'm going to show you what I think it means, and this is just me thinking, but uh, you might have another theory on what this seven days that I found means, and I'm going to get to it right now. I'm going to build up to it uh, as we go through. All right. Let's lay the groundwork for this. We know that in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. And on the first day shall be a Sabbath. So we know the first day of this feast has to be on a Sabbath. Now I know why the Jews did not use the first sliver of the moon. They could not because it was nowhere near a Sabbath. The first sliver did not happen on a Sabbath. So that's why they started their year long before the first sliver of the moon happened because they knew this law here that they had to for the feast of tabernacles begin the feast of tabernacles on a sabbath so we have the 15th day of the seventh month right it is a sabbath when it starts and on the eighth day shall also be a sabbath so eight days later is a sabbath so it starts on a saturday Excuse me, and it ends on a Saturday. So, let's go in here. When did it begin? It began on Saturday, on the 30th. The great eighth day will be when? It will be on the 7th, October the 7th. It began on September the 30th. Where's September? September the 30th, and it will end on September the 7th. Uh, the Enoch timeline that I use, beginning the year at the day of equal parts, just like Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? And when I begin the year on March 17th, and I work through the whole year, everything just falls perfectly into place. Each month has 30 days except for the month. It's called a gate, and it's the changing of the season. There are 30, 30, and 31. So there's 91 days per season. And so, we go forward throughout the year, all the way to the end, and there is not one thing out of place when we do it that way. When is the, when is the Feast of Tabernacles begin? It begins here at nightfall on the 29th, just like the, the Hebrews or the Jews said it did. And on the 30th was the first day. And what's the great eighth day? It is October the 7th. Where are we at right now? We are on October the 2nd. If, and this is just me thinking, that there might be this three-day warning. I don't know. But something huge would have to happen on the 4th, which would tell the world something terrible is happening. Or it would tell the church, the bride, that the rapture is about to occur. Only those who are watching and dreaming of this moment will see where this is leading to. So let me get back to this. So we have set the framework up. We know that the 15th day of the seventh month must be on a Sabbath. And we sh I showed you that. That happened on September the 30th. And the great eighth, day uh, great eighth day must also be on a Sabbath. 
and that is going to happen on October the 7th. When was Jesus born? Jesus was born on tabernacles. He was born at nightfall of September the 29th, and he was born on the 30th. He was born on the Sabbath, and he was circumcised eight days later on October the 7th, on the Sabbath. Um, so we go to here, and I'll show you that. All right. Jesus is circumcised. Jesus is born here on tabernacles. It begins, it says September 29th, 30th. And Jesus is named and circumcised on October the 7th. I have a little discussion going on in the email with Echrosymphony about whether or not Mary was allowed to be in there. I thought, and maybe she's right, and maybe I'm wrong, or maybe I'm right, maybe she's wrong. I don't know. But I thought after seven days of her performing that ceremony that she had to perform to be clean, that for the next... And, and while she cannot have relations with her husband for a total of 40 days, um, that she was allowed to go into the temple where Jesus was circumcised. But that is just a working uh, conversation that Ikra Symphony and I are in in the email, <laughs> excuse me, discussing that. Now, um, something I want to make you, I want to bring a notice here. For some reason, and I don't know why, Sister Sandy has added, and, and it might be an old timeline that, that she did. This might have been on here from an old timeline. I'm not sure where it came from. <coughs> Excuse me. Tishri 30 is October the 14th. That is the day of the uh, solar eclipse. Isn't it crazy that that's on there since... When you go to, and, and again, it might have been something to do with uh, an old timeline that she had on there. But when you go to my old timeline here, and you come down here, I don't have it on here. I don't know if I had it on there in the past. I do see a little bit of white out right there. I might have had it on there in the past. Um, but, and I don't know why I had it on there. It, it, October the 14th. Um, and it might have been because I had found that extra seven days, which I'm about to talk about. I'll show it to you. Uh, but October the 14th is the date of the eclipse. So either it's an old timeline or uh, for some reason, Sister Sandy put it on there. But I'm glad she did because October the 14th is day 212 of the year, starting the year on March the 17th. And it is the day the eclipse happens. All right. Now. I set up the framework of this. This is for, I just heard a, 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 a teaching by Chuck Missler, amazing teaching. And he clearly says in there that some of you are still drinking milk. This is, these are things that are hard to understand if you don't have the basis of, of all of these things that, that we have grown to understand this is a meat eating item and like I'm in a discussion right now on Facebook and it blows my mind how this ever happens and it really it it, ag it aggravates me they will go in there and, and like I said it's a discussion on Facebook where they will go in there and say on the first day God created Jesus Jesus created everything Jesus is not a created being Jesus, the Father, think about it, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have been together for all eternity, past. For some reason, they got together and decided that they wanted to share the happiness and the love that those three have for each other and bring us into this family that they have. Why? I don't know. I suppose it would be like a parent... It's two people very much in love deciding to have a child or adopt a child or bring another person into their loving household to share that with another person. I don't, I can't quite wrap my mind around that, but Jesus created everything. He is the creator. The Bible tells us that Jesus created everything. He did not, that's why it's so dangerous, I think, to state, to make the statement that Jesus 
um, was born on September the 11th. He was not born on September the 11th. He was born on September the 29th at nightfall, becoming September the 30th. He was born on tabernacles. He was not born on the first day of creation. It's it's good for somebody who is very well developed into the Bible to make that statement that September the 11th is when Jesus was, was uh, physically born in this world into human flesh gets people running and thinking that Jesus is less than what he is. So I will never subscribe to the concept that Jesus was born on September the 11th because September the 11th is the first day of creation. That's when God began creating. That's when Jesus began creating everything. Notice that he goes to the cross 14 days after our current new year. And notice that Jesus was born 14 days after the old head of the year, after the Feast of Trumpets. God does everything in matches, in pairs. He would not have, Jesus would have gone to the cross on the first day of the year had God wanted us to look at September the 11th as being when Jesus was born, which would have actually been four days before the head of the year on Feast of Tabernacles on September the 15th. So I wanted to clear that up, put that behind you. Jesus is not a created being. He is God Almighty. And these are things that when you're in, in this, you understand that you have to be careful in that thought process because Jesus is God Almighty. And if you can't Wrap your mind around that. The rest of this doesn't matter. All right, let me get back into this. Said my piece to that. Let's get started. Here's what I found, and I'm going to work through this. Uh, you have everything I just said. You, you, you got that in the back of your mind, everything I just said. Here we find in John 7, 19, Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keepeth the law. Why do you go about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil who goeth about to kill thee. He already knew that these were the very people that were going to push to have him hung on the cross. He already knew that before they even knew it. He already knew it. Why? Because Jesus is God. Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marveled. Moses, therefore, gave you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but but of the fathers. Who are the fathers? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They are the fathers. Let us create man in our image. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's where the law came from. The law came from God. It did not come from Moses. God gave Moses the law. Moses gave it to us. And ye, on the Sabbath day, circumcise a man. Jesus is telling them that he was circumcised on this day, on the Sabbath day, he's telling us this right here. This is him he's speaking about. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on a Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge the righteous judgment. So, did you catch that? Did you see that little detail in there? Jesus was born, just like I said, on Feast of Tabernacles. He is the man that is circumcised again on the Sabbath. Now, wait a second. There is a law, very clear. You do no work on the Sabbath. But you must circumcise the boy on the eighth day. What do you do? You break the law or you break the law. You either break the law of the Sabbath and work on the Sabbath and circumcise that boy or... You don't circumcise that boy on the eighth day, and you break the law of God about circumcision. I presented this to somebody who drinks milk. They, I said, there's a contradiction. Is there not? What do you do with that? What do you do with that? I said, well, it's not contrary. We're misunderstanding. There's no misunderstanding. It's very clear. This particular Jesus is talking about himself, and he is circumcised on the eighth day. It is a Sabbath. What do you do? Because you can't do any servile work on the Sabbath. He can't answer it. He can't answer that question. All right. So proud of myself for finding that, by the way. 
There's more. There's a lot more. Check this out. <laughs> now, this is the midst of the feast. When is the midst of the feast? Jesus, in the midst of the Feast of Tabernacles, goes up into the temple, and he taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, how knoweth this man letters, or the, the Bible, how does he, or the Torah, how does he know this stuff if he's never been, like, in seminary school? How does he know all Well, because he wrote it. He wrote it. And so, where, when are we here? This is the middle of the feast, right? This is not when it began on September the 30th. It is not when it ended on October the 7th. It is... Um, the middle. It is October the 4th. It's right in the middle. Not the 30th of September, not the 7th of October. It's right in the middle on October the 4th. What huge event do you think might happen to point the bride to say, hey, get ready. This is about to happen in the next three days. Or what huge event might occur to cover up the rapture that is about to occur? What could confuse the entire planet into not even missing a bunch of people? This has to be set up in advance. And again, remember, when, you're, when you have a combination lock, you spin to the right, you spin to the left, you spin to the right, and you spin to the left. And if you miss one number somewhere, it doesn't match. This year, this matches. What event do we know of that is going to occur on October the 4th? What event that we don't know of that might occur on October the 4th, which would alert the bride to what is about to happen? All right, let me get back into this. All right, here in Luke, remember Luke is speaking predominantly, not completely, but predominantly to the church, to the bride. And here we have in Luke 4.18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and set a liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. This is where we are at. We are at the acceptable year of the Lord. There have been so many exhaustive studies showing that 2023 is the year of the rapture. What exact date? I think we're about to be told. I really think we're about to be told the exact date that this is going to, be, that this is going to happen. And it will be told, and the only ones that will understand is the bride. Everyone else will see or look into the world. We will look to heaven. It'll be different for us. All right. Now, look at this. This is what I found last year. This is what I've spoken of in my YouTube for the past, I guess, almost three years now. Two years, three years. But look at this. There is a hidden seven days in here that I can't quite, uh, I think I know what it is. This year didn't match anything any other year, but this year it actually does match. But we'll read this together. 1 Kings 8, 65. At that time, and we're reading, of course, from the King James Version. At that time, Solomon held a feast, and all Israel with him, a great congregation, from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt, before the Lord our God. Seven days and seven days, even 14 days. This feast is supposed to be seven days long, not 14. It's supposed to be seven. Why does Solomon keep this feast for an extra seven days? And, and pay attention. So on the eighth day, he sent the people away, and they blessed the king, and went into their tents, joyful and glad of heart, for all the goodness that the Lord hath done for David, his servant, and for Israel, his people. Seven days, we're in that seven days right now. But on the eighth day, 
which is when. When is the eighth day? That's October the 7th. On October the 7th is the eighth day. But for some reason, there's this other seven days. I'm not sure if that is pointing to a seven-year tribulation or a seven-day period where the saints go home. Every example I have in the Bible, and nobody can give me so far, so far, thus far, nobody has been able to give me any biblical proof that states that the saints will be here for the first three and a half. We know about the two witnesses, but the saints of the tribulation, are they going to be here? Remember, the seven-year tribulation is for the Jews. It's to change their hearts, to make them realize who the one that they pierced. They will look up and cry and realize the one they pierced. They are going through this seven years for that purpose. This seven years is for the Jewish people. Where does this great multitude that no man can count come in? Because the bride's gone. The bride's gone. What? Where does this other group come in? You find it, this in Revelation. You see the elders, the 24 elders, which represents all of the bride. They are a great, it doesn't say great, they are a group of people from every tongue, every nation, and every kindred. You can see that. I think it's Revelation 4, I think. But then you see this great multitude. They are also from every tribe and every nation, every kindred. They, are this, they, they look the same. They're not the same. One group is gathered. You see that in 2 Thessalonians. One group is caught up, raptured. You see that in 1 Thessalonians. So we have this extra seven days. But how do you assign it to anything? Why, why, why we worry about it? I mean, it only says it once, right? No, bam, it says it twice. 2 Corinthians 7, 8. Also, at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from the entering into Hamath under the river Egypt. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly. For they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, that's the 23rd day of the seventh month. Let's take a look at that real quick. 23rd day of the seventh month. What happens? Right there. The 23rd day of the seventh month is the great eighth day. It's Tishri 23. It is the day Jesus is circumcised and named. It's the day they broke the law of the Sabbath to circumcise him and every other child that was born on September the 29th at nightfall, becoming September the 30th after nightfall. Becoming the Sabbath and every child that was circumcised since the law was given to Moses they have broken the law to circumcise. They had to because which law was greater? It contradicts itself, does it not? But does it? Because something happens here. Something huge happens on October the 7th. Tishri 23. Now, if we count the extra seven days, look where it brings us. It brings us to that October 14th date down there that doesn't show what it's there for. I don't know, again, if, if uh, Sister Sandy had a glitch and she just added it, or if it was on one of my old timelines. Don't even know why it's there. But it just I'm just so glad it is, because that is the day of the eclipse. It happens on October the 14th, seven days later. Now, we have this verse that we found. That matches. It matches. We have Jesus going up halfway through. This is October the 4th. We see things happening on October the 4th. We have Jesus circumcised on the Sabbath. No servile work on the Sabbath, but Jesus is circumcised on the Sabbath on October the 7th. We have seven days later. Remember on the great eighth day, he sent them. They were glad. He sent them away into their tents. But he gives another seven days, and that comes to October the 14th, where the, <coughs> excuse me, where the uh, eclipse is. That's pretty crazy. All right, let's see here. Yep, let me keep on reading. So he, on the, on the, uh, and on the three and 20th day, on the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had showed unto David and to Solomon 
and to Israel, his people. Boom. I, I don't know how much clearer to make it. This verse here matches. This, it didn't match any other year. I didn't know what the extra seven days were for him. I've seen this for quite some time, but I never knew how to apply it. Um, uh, Tony over at the Cataclysm, Tony Early, just made a video about these seven days as well. And uh, I'm expounding upon that. It's absolutely amazing that this is here and that we are having an eclipse exactly seven days after the end of Tabernacles. Here's my thought. Let me go to this. Here's This is just my thought. And I don't know. I'm not going to say, thus saith the Lord, because I don't know. It's just amazing how it matches. September the 30th begins Tabernacles. Jesus is born. October the 4th is the midst of the feast. Jesus went there in the middle of the feast. He does this on October the 4th. On October the 7th, could this be our rapture? The same day on the Sabbath. There should be no work done on the Sabbath. God rested from all his work. But here we are on a Sabbath on October the 7th. Jesus is circumcised. Could we be raptured out of here on October the 7th? And then seven days later, could a great multitude appear in heaven? You can read it for yourself. It literally goes directly from this group of people to the 144,000 to this huge number that no man can count, literally, immediately. And then the rest of Revelation is about the Jews. And they're coming back to him. Does tribulation begin here like it did twice before in history? Adam and Eve sinned on this day. God brought judgment upon them. He gave them all of the terrible things that they would go through now because of their sin, because of eating the fruit of the tree that they were supposed to. They did this on October the 31st. October the 31st is exactly 150 days to the cross and 153 uh, three days to resurrection. This is the day God shut the door. This is the day Adam sinned. I think, and this is the day, now October the 31st, is also the day the flood began. Is this the day God is going to begin working with Israel to make them come around to see who he is? On this day, is this when the 144,000 will be here? The two witnesses, three and a half years, and in three and a half years, the two witnesses will die in the streets and then after three days they will be raised up and then the antichrist of course will go into the temple and proclaim himself to be god and god loses it after that remember all the terrible things that are happening on our planet will not happen in israel they will happen over here on this side where we are all right notice this i got this off of somewhere on youtube or on facebook i'm not sure but notice this they're saying that the that you light the candle from the outside in. <laughs> the center candle is Pentecost. Now they're going to light the candle from the outside in, beginning on the right, working their way to the left. The outside one is trumpets. The middle one is atonement. And the inside one is tabernacles. Tabernacles was lit on September the 30th, but it is a seven-day feast. It's the last candle to be lit. All right. This is what I'm talking about when I say October the 4th, something huge is going to happen that only the bride will understand when it does. Could it be? There's a lot of activity going on in Damascus right now. Could it be? And, and, and so here's, here's the way I see it playing out. Israel can't just strike Damascus and destroy them with a nuclear bomb. The entire planet will rise up against Israel. But in the image or the, the pictures that we see in the Bible, there's this guy that's going to come in and he's going to like boost Israel. He's going to he's going to the Antichrist is going to do wonders. He's going to he's going to calm everybody down. He's going to take control. Do you think that would happen if Israel was the one that, that just leveled Damascus? No. Here's what I think. I think that they are going to attempt to launch a nuclear weapon from Damascus, and it's going to fail. It's going to go straight up and come right back down and level Damascus. 
that would be the only way that Israel is not held liable for what happened. Even if, and, and this, even if Israel were to drop a bomb and it turns out that they set off a nuclear bomb by mistake because it was under the ground or whatnot, that would still not fare well with Israel because they were the ones that initiated. They cannot have any blame whatsoever for what happens to Damascus, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's going to be Damascus or somebody in Damascus pushing that button, and this thing, God, is going to spin it right back around and drop it right back on them. They did it to themselves. The Israel did not do it to them. They did it to themselves, and there will be clear evidence that they did that to themselves. They are leveled because of an action they took. And, of course, Israel and the rest of us will say, God did that. God stopped that from happening. All right, let me get back into this picture. The burden, this is, this is a heavy burden. You know what a burden is. It's heavy. It's a heavy burden. And the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. It'll be destroyed. Is this going to have, is this what we're going to see? I don't know. I don't want to say, yeah, this has to be it, because I don't know. But wouldn't it be something if this is what we saw? Everyone else on the planet would be like, wouldn't understand what this meant. But to us, we would understand exactly what this meant. Now, when is it going to happen? I found this in Isaiah seventeen fourteen, And behold, at evening tide, which is at nightfall, trouble. And before the morning, it is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. Isaiah 17, this is down at the bottom. They're still talking about Damascus, and it's telling us when it's going to happen. It's going to happen at nightfall in Israel, uh, whatever time it is around the rest of the world when nightfall hits in Israel, and this event is going to take place, and we're going to know it. Is this going to take place at nightfall on the third becoming the fourth, or on the fourth becoming the fifth? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm watching because now, this year, all of the mechanisms are falling perfectly into place, which now, this year, align with everything because of the eclipse that we're seeing. It's exciting, honestly. Revelation 3. Uh, where are we at? 12? Halfway through 12? I Okay, so... There are two groups getting new names. It doesn't speak about this to anyone that's going into the millennium. It speaks about this to anyone going to heaven. And again, I want to remind you that we are being raptured, but the saints are being gathered. They're a great multitude that no man can count. They outnumber us 10 to 1 probably. There, there's a lot of them. They will not carry a rod of iron. They will not be kings and priests. They will not have a crown. Uh, they will have palm branches. The Bible specific on that in Revelation. Um, they will not go wherever the, uh, the, the groom goes, wherever Jesus goes. They will not receive mansions. Um, but they will be on the outer court, dwelling. It's, it's, it's still a beautiful... You're going to heaven. If you don't believe in anything I'm saying and you think no man can know the day or the hour and you're just throwing that Jewish idiom out there, which basically means the time we're in right now, you know, we're we're in that time right now. So um, and you wind up finding yourself here. I pray. I pray it's only seven days. Um, I have a lot of friends and, and family that just don't believe in anything I'm doing here. And I just pray it's only seven days. I don't see why it would need to be any longer because I can tell you for everybody that I've told when you see me go, um, I would think it would take them just like Elisha did when he saw Elijah go. It would take them seconds to drop to their knees. How long is God going to put somebody who, and I don't know, I don't want to say 100% for sure that it's not three and a half years because I don't know. Is it five months? Is it seven days? Is it 30 days? Is it, I don't know. There's so many different scenarios. That'll be up to them to figure out. So this is the church of, um, I'm going to forget, uh, Philadelphia. This is the church of Philadelphia. You'll find this in Revelation 3. I write upon him. Mine, and this is repeated three times in here, which is incredible. 
I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He repeats the name three times. We are going to be given a brand new name. The Church of Philadelphia will. What other church is going to give a brand new name? The Church of Pergamum. I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth. A lot of people will take that verse and and use it uh, for the bride. This verse, this church is not the bride. Pergamum, Pergamum is not the bride. The Church of Philadelphia is the bride. All right. I wanted to show you up there at the top, those seven days still bugging me. Look at that, 78 views. It's been over two years, almost three years ago. I got 78 views on that. Those seven days, there's always those seven days. End Time Dreams and Visions, uh, Bob Barber over there, is looking at also October the 4th, which just blew my mind. That just blew my mind. Uh, apparently, they're doing some kind of a, a broadcast on that day, you know? And in his video uh, one day earlier, he says, we are going all the way to the last possible moment. And I agree with that. We are going to be here to the last possible second. We are going to be snatched out of imminent danger. We are not going to go through it, but we're going to be snatched out of here just in the nick of time. If he took us right now, why? There's, why would a rapture occur right now? There's nothing world ending or uh, super like it's it's not good out there i'm not saying that but there's there's not like this fireball headed towards us right now right there's not a nuclear bomb headed towards us there's not you know a lot of people just dying in the streets uh, the, there's no re i mean i'm not saying there's no reason i want to go there's there's a reason for the rapture for me but what i'm saying is it's being snatched out of imminent danger we either that or we're just not seeing it but we're going to see it as satan is kicked out of heaven there might be a war going on in heaven right now as we speak, and Satan's about to be kicked out, and we'll be taken out of here. So, thought I'd bring that to you. Um, cool Cat, I think everybody's beginning to watch his videos. He's, he does such an amazing job. I'd really like him to step in there, look at those two verses I pulled out of the Bible and see how there is a seven day, the great eighth day, but then there's this other seven days. And isn't it a miracle or ironic how it lands on exactly on the solar eclipse of that day? Isn't that incredible? And then we have this thing that's going on on October the 4th, and that is actually the middle of the feast when Jesus went into the temple to discuss and not finish he didn't finish that verse he was reading from he read most of it but he didn't read the end of it why because the end of it is when we go is he going to go into that temple on october the 4th and finish that verse i don't know so a lot of stuff to think about um like comment share and subscribe of course uh those people that I mentioned, Eucharist Symphony, and uh, just everybody that I mentioned, End Time Dreams and Vision, Cool Cat, doing a great job. I hope he gets into those two verses. I'm be, be just waiting to see if he sees what I'm seeing on those uh, two verses where that extra seven days. Why did Solomon add seven days? God didn't say to add seven days. I don't see it anywhere in the law. The law says seven days and on the great eighth day. Why? What are those extra seven days for? that David and Solomon are seeing that we don't see anywhere else written in the law of, uh, in Leviticus. I don't understand. So, something to study, something to look at. And last year when I found those seven days, it didn't match anything. I'm like, what? October 14th, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't show up on my timeline. There's nothing there. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't match up with any numbers anywhere. What's it for? Ah, but this year, one year later, October the 14th, definitely means something. So go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody except the Lord in your heart. We are out of time. We're out of time. And if you think that this event is not going to happen because we thought so many different dates, think again, because one of these times it is going to happen, and then it will be too late. Now is the time to start helping 
digging these verses out, studying them, and trying to figure out when we're going, all of us together, if we work together and study this Bible. I mean, if there's a million of us just studying a part of it, we could put this together. That's what we need to do. We need to work together and try to figure this out. So, Repo Man 64, we'll chat with you again. Maybe.